Hello and welcome to another Modern League video here on ModernNexus.com. My name is Ryland, also known as Holy Shamgar on Twitch. And today we're going to be playing a uh, green-white value company deck, uh, largely uh, pushed forward by Todd Stevens. He recently had a um, first place finish at the team SCG uh, Atlanta Open, uh, playing in the modern seat with this deck. Um, our list is slightly different, but hardly. Um, we've lost the main deck Eternal Witness and gained a third Ramanac Excavator. And I'm currently testing um, Splashing Blue for, for Unified Wills on the board. Um, this is something that I saw a couple people do to some success on Magic Online, and I wanted to give it a better try. We'll discuss that a little bit more later. But uh, other than that, we're very close to Todd Stevens' list. Um, as far as what the deck does, if you're not particularly familiar with it, uh, it it's largely just a green-white company deck. I mean, you've got your Knight of the Reliquaries, your uh, Birds and Noble Hierarchs to ramp you, and your Collected Companies. Uh, on top of that, you've kind of got this land-oriented package of Azusa, Ramanek, Excavator, Corsair, and even uh, Tireless Tracker. Uh, so you can really get to the point where you're playing many lands a turn, and because of that, um, we're playing four Ghost Quarters. It's very easy to, uh, if you have a Susa and Ramanev Excavator, it can be very easy to kind of just get to the point where you're triple strip mining your opponent if uh, if they've already gone through their basics, which is not an uncommon thing to happen in modern people. Uh, often will be playing mana bases with few basics, and you can really abuse that if you're able to get those cards out at the same time. Um, in addition to that, we've also got a little bit of interaction in Path, uh, not not anything other than that, really. That's one of our uh, only ways to really interact, unless you count like scavenging news, interacting with their graveyard, which we also do have. Uh, we also have voice resurgence in our two drop slot. We're a lot heavier in the three drop slot, and this is for two reasons, of course. One is that we have collected companies, so we want to get our our best uh, the best bang for our buck, so to speak, off of those companies. And on top of that, we also have these seven mana dorks on on one. So curving one into three. Is something we're trying to do a lot as well so having that that three drop slot be the the heaviest makes a lot of sense for a deck like this and then in our mana base uh, we've got like i already mentioned those those four ghost quarters we also have this gavany um, which we can tutor up with the knight of the reliquary if we want uh, other than that we've got seven fetch lands four forests and two planes since we've replaced a forest with a breeding pool here uh, and a couple horizon canopies which are excellent in this deck obviously um not only can they do their regular job of just, you know, when you're flooding a little bit, you can sack it and, and draw a card, but with Ramanap, and even with Ramanap and Azusa, you can really um, start to <laughs> draw quite a few cards off of Canopy. Uh, as far as the sideboard is concerned, uh, we've got a Bajuka Bog for those graveyard decks, um, which I'm not sure is worth it right now. It's something I kind of want to test, but it feels like it's probably too slow uh, most of the time. In addition, I'm also interested in testing these Unified Wills. This deck, uh, in my opinion, struggles a lot against um, combo decks. Uh, anything particularly linear that requires interaction. Uh, obviously, like I already mentioned, we have very, very few ways to interact. Scavenging use with your graveyard and, and Path of Exile with your Path to Exile with your creatures. Um, outside of those, we're really not interacting. I guess we're interacting with your lands uh, via Ghost Quarter, so that helps. Uh, for something like Tron, and it can help for something like Valakut decks, uh, but Ghost Quarter is certainly not Tectonic Edge in, in that matchup. So it really just depends. Um, so yeah, uh, we're testing some Unified Wills to see if that can perhaps help us in some of the more dedicated combo matchups. You never know what you may find on Magic Online um, or in, in paper, really, for Modern. People will play all kinds of different stuff. And so I kind of just want to have a uh, catch-all card that we can bring in, in in combo matchups. I saw a couple people do it to some success, and I, I think I like it. I want to test it out a little bit more. Uh, we also have these two explosives. Um, you may think it's kind of awkward in our two-color deck to have to have engineered explosives, but um, putting it on two is, is not an uncommon play, and when we bring it in uh, against particular decks, we may also end up being... Uh, siding out on some of our two drops, and it's not like blowing a voice resurgence is the end of the world either. On top of that, there are times where you want to and can put it on three, 
um, from from the ability of your mana dorks to do that. But obviously, we're pretty choked on threes, so sometimes that, that could certainly be a little more awkward. Uh, as far as enchantments and artifacts are concerned, we've got one Crystalli Pride Mage and one Reclamation Sage. It's possible they should both be Pride Mage. Um, I'm not sure yet. Um, Sigarda is kind of just coming in in all his dust matchups, Liliana the Veil matchups, and certainly any, against any Shadow Deck. Um, it, it kills them in one or two hits against the Shadow Deck for sure, uh, unless they really just haven't been doing anything. Um, and it's very hard for them to deal with, as in they can't typically deal with it. So we definitely like that one. And it has evasion, so they can't even really block it either, uh, unless they're like a Lingering Souls um, Shadow Deck. Whisperwood Elemental for those Wrath of God decks. Um, particularly good there. Aven Mind Sensor comes in just for any any deck that may be searching with some frequency, especially like a Valakut deck. Uh, Stony Silence we have obviously for the artifact matchups as well as this Kataki. Um, Affinity, KCI, whatever else. We'll certainly bring them in there. Lantern, I suppose. Um, so that's, that's kind of what we're working with. Nothing too crazy complicated. Uh, as far as our main deck configuration, just a lot of a lot of value creatures uh, with some synergy. Um, we don't have like a knight combo. It's possible if we're splashing the blue anyway. Maybe we're supposed to play some kind of uh, some some number of retreat to coral helms. Uh, it's kind of hard to find room for those. You want to keep your creature count particularly high, um, but but maybe you get to jam uh, one or two of those if you can find find a cut for them um, so that might be somewhere we need to go in the future if this deck really is struggling against combo decks at least then we could have our own linear combo that we could uh, race towards but for now I think uh, I like it just being the value deck um, but that that may be somewhere to move forward if if we're struggling um, so that's it for us and I will see you in round number one